Sam Kakembo here and today I'm going to talk about market cycles. If you understand the concept of market cycles inside out, it will be easy for you to invest in real estate in any place in the world without having to guess what's going on. So basically what these this graph here is a chart of how buyers act in certain market cycles. So I'm going to actually split this chart up and show you where these market cycles are uh, changing. Get this thicker thing. So there's actually four different market cycles as you can see here. So on this left side here, you have the seller market phase one. I'll explain it later. And then on the way down, you have the seller market phase two. Now we're hitting the bottom of the prices, seller's market or buyer's market phase one. And then when prices are on the way up, buyer's market phase two. So let's see, S, M1, seller's market one. Seller's market two and the spots where we want to be buying the real estate because it's the, uh, the best bang for your buck. Buyer's market one and buyer's market two. So right now I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So our market is usually a seller's market uh, you have a seller's market one and the seller's market two. We really haven't hit a, a stage of the buyer's market where there's a lot of panic and depression. Um, this happened in the 70s when interest rates were really high and uh, the cost of a mortgage, like you could get a mortgage and the interest rate was between 12 and 18 percent. So we've been on our way up in Nova Scotia and we haven't really hit the peak. It's going to take a while because our market is very, um, it's very slow to go up. But uh, other places like Toronto and Vancouver, their prices have been jumping for years. And now they're basically hitting this point, the, the point between thrill and euphoria. And every time there's a price drop, they kind of get the anxiety. Um, I think they're right here. And eventually we're going to see some huge dips in prices, uh, especially in condos in uh, Toronto and Vancouver, because they're, uh, you know, $600 a square foot. So basically, the way a market cycle works, I'm going to go to my notes, um, the seller's market phase one. So the seller, the seller's market phase one is when the demand has reached its highest point, And there's plenty of investors that want to buy what you're selling. Um, the seller's market phase two, is when uh, job growth slows, properties take longer to sell, and the market is uh, slowly getting oversupplied by new developments. Um, then the buyer's market phase one, a market that is oversupplied with properties. This is places like Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, those are emerging markets. And then the other markets like Florida, Arizona, they have an oversupply of properties, but they're slowly um, cleaning up. And the buyer's market phase two, when the market starts to absorb the oversupply and the vacant units become occupied and the abandoned properties get purchased. So basically buyer's market phase one and buyer's market phase two is where you want to be. So right here. Um, so basically in a buyer's market phase one, we know the prices have gone down. We know the prices are gonna continue to go down, but sometimes there are deals that are so cheap in this period that you have to buy it. The cost to build is cheaper than the cost to buy. Get, get the property, rent it out. Uh, you can cash flow in this kind of market. And so basically you're financing the property with debt, but the debt is going to be serviced by your tenants. Uh, a really good strategy is a quadplex. So when there's some vacancies, you still have the uh, expenses being paid and a quadplex still has the rules of a single family home, so you can put a low down payment on it and also cheaper insurance. So that's a good, uh, a good way to start. The buyer's market phase two, 
that's basically when the news is saying we've hit the bottom of the market and the prices are going to start going up and appreciating and there's actually different sites that you can go to to find this information uh, in Canada you want to go to um, the banks right so you're going to go to RBC uh, let me make a bigger font here Royal Bank and CMHC so they basically have uh, reports they have market reports that you can sign up to via email and uh, basically they're going to tell you all of the information on the markets um, how they're going up if they're going down what the inventory is uh, what the financing the average mortgages are that's the best place to get uh, that information in the states they have way better information they're, they're big on statistics so uh, I like um, the federal housing the federal housing authority FHFA and basically the FHFA is going to tell you what the markets are doing every quarter and you just google that um, and uh, you can pick you can pick three or four cities and pick a report from say 2006 till now and it will actually show you by what percent each market is going up and down so it's very easy to find a emerging market or a market in buyers market phase one and buyers market phase two because you'll see the statistics of the uh, the property so I'm gonna actually show you um, <coughs> FH let's try it we'll start with CMHC There you go. So CMHC, I'm going to go back and just do uh, consumers. All right, so with the CMHC Consumer Reports, we're going to look for tools and resources. I actually didn't um, research this ahead of time, but it should be fairly easy. Publications and Reports. So then you're going to go to Housing Market Information and get Atlantic Canada since I live in Atlantic Canada and I'm gonna hit the housing market outlook of Halifax and we have fall 12 BAM so yeah here's a report from CMHC basically telling me what's going on with the housing prices um, the new construction uh, a big sign of a, a big sign of a market that is in decline is when the new construction is uh, being oversupplied so sellers market phase two if you saw in this report that there's a lot of supply of new construction you might know that uh, we're in a sellers market phase two so let's go back to that uh, report so the population of Nova Scotia is currently hovering around 945,000. However, for the first time in four years, the province has been experiencing a negative net migration in 2011. That means there's more people leaving the province than there is coming into the province. So the existing home sales, like I said, Nova Scotia is very stagnant. So we're basically sticking around the 6,000 range. Uh, we hit 6,800 as the highest in 2007. And we're at 6,700 in 2013. That's forecasted. Um, this is an old report, so yeah, we're at 5,800 in this report. Um, the existing average price, as you can see, we're slowly going up. There is no downspouts, therefore, um, we're not actually in the buyer's market. But there are still our deals. You just have to look really hard for them. Now, I'm going to show you something in the United States that's going to uh, blow your mind, actually. So, 
Yeah, FHFA, the Federal Housing Finance Agency. Now I'm going to go to the Housing Price Index. I'm going to go to Cities. Uh, some popular cities people always want. They always ask me about Miami, so I'm going to put Miami in there. What do we have Miami? Um, the market that I invest in is Atlanta, so I'm going to put Atlanta, Georgia in there. And another uh, place that people always want to talk about is like Los Angeles, California. Actually, let's do Las Vegas. Uh, more people, I think, have been to Vegas than uh, California. So with this housing price index, we can actually take this chart and I'm going to go back to 2004. So in 2004, we had the, um, where's this picture again? So in 2004, we had a lot of optimism, excitement, thrill, and euphoria around 2006. Um, everything, you could just buy any house, wait a couple months, and sell it for, you know, $30,000, $100,000 more. So you can actually track these stats. This was all tra trackable information, right? So let's look back in 2001. Uh, Miami is the first column. Atlanta is the middle, and Vegas is uh, the farthest. So in 2001, basically, they started getting double-digit returns in uh, Miami. 11%, 12%, 2004, 21% percent return. So if you bought a property for you know, 100000 a year later, it's worth 121,000. That's crazy. You're you're killing your mortgage with that. Um, 2006, 27 percent. 2007, it drops down to 10 percent. In the second quarter, six percent, then two percent. Right. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Let's see what happened there. So in 2001, they're con consistently six percent every single year. And then uh, 2001, there's 3 to 4% every single year. Basically very stable. It's an emerging market. Now let's look at Las Vegas. Start down in 2001, 6%, 7%, 7%. And then bam, in 2003, 13% in a quarter. I think this is crazy. 29%, 43% capital gains. Like you can buy a, a property for 100000 and three months later, you could sell it for a hundred and forty-three thousand. That's crazy. So uh, yeah, we're having double-digit returns consistently for about six years straight in all these markets. Now, bam! All of a sudden, uh, the housing market crashes. They have the you know the financial meltdown of banks. Look at Vegas, losing five, eight, fourteen percent, twenty-one percent. 29, 34, 30, Miami, same thing, 23, 28, 27, 25, Georgia, the same thing, but Georgia's just doing it on a smaller scale because they went up on a smaller scale. So basically, with this information, you can automatically find out where the steepest discounts in the country is and then start, inviting in, uh, and start investing in those areas. The reason why I picked Atlanta, Georgia is because it's more under the radar there's going to be a lot of discounts because the banks are still collapsing, but there's less people. The reason why Miami is doing, you know, 27% in a quarter in Vegas is because everyone is going there. I like to go where, you know, there's less people. So, yeah, that basically is emerging market theory and market cycles. Um, take some time to research this because you can go into any market Find the stats on that market and see what part of um, what part of the market cycle you're in, and that's going to determine how you're going to invest. Uh, thank you very much. Go to www.oxohomes.com for some more information. We have a blog on there, oxohomes.com/blog, and we'll have uh, more articles and uh, or videos just like this. Thank you.